All right, guys, how you doing? It's Rebeer. Hope you're all good. I was just about to restring a bunch of guitars because I, you know, have different guitars for different things that I'm doing. And it's always one of those things that I put off because they all need changing at the same time. And I'm sure some of you guys can sympathize with me. I figured I'd turn on the camera and chat to you a little bit about how often you should restring your guitar. Is there, is there any recommended time to do so? The strings I'm using, the gauges for different things. Go through it with you guys and open the discussion in the comment section below. But in any case, let's crack on. So yeah, I'm one of those guys that like tries to restring only when necessary. So if I'm recording, it might be every couple of days, depends on what the strings, how the strings deaden over the recording and if that's really affecting the way it sounds. If I'm just using the guitar for leisure and playing at home and just jamming out, they'll, they'll stay on there until they might be black nearly, you know, that's the situation there. However, if I'm gigging, I will restring every gig because I sweat a lot and I don't trust a couple of gigs on tour over the years with Tosca where I decided to hold on to the strings for another gig and my sweat had made enough of a job through them that they broke and it was just a pain in the ass and really annoying situation. So to avoid that happening at all, I, rev I put new strings on for every single gig. First things first, one of the things that I like to use that I'm sure most of you guys use is a string winder, but this one in particular that you can see on the close up, it's an old Diodario one, but for some reason they stopped making them like this. It just feels much better in the hand to me than the newer ones. Next thing is of course the strings. So I'm gonna be using uh, NYXL 10 to 52. I use these for anything in E flat or E flat standard or drop C sharp. And I'm restringing the 55 custom shop strat first. I actually really like restringing strats because of the type of uh, machine head they've got on them. The way you like thread it down and then bend it around and then just string it up. Really, really easy to do. The other cool thing is that when you unwind, they just pop straight out and they look like that. Strings are off, we're about to put the new ones on, but just whilst I remember, uh, a few people asked why I've changed the pick guard. The main reason is I'm testing out some new pickups and as I'm sure many of you guys know, aluminium pick guards have more of a high end roll off and they generally change the sound of the pickups a lot. Something else that I use quite a bit, but not all the time, but it is really cool. And also it's because it was a gift from Andrew Groves from Arcane Roots back on the first uh, tour with Tosca ages ago and he gave me this. It's a string stretcher. And last but certainly by no means least, this stuff, GHS Fast Fret. I have used this since I started playing guitar. Uh, it was in my dad's guitar case when I picked up the guitar to try it. Uh, it's kind of a problem actually, because if I don't have it, at a gig, it can be a bit of an OCD thing where I'm like, it's gonna go wrong because I don't have the fast fret. One thing I was gonna go through real quick, that when I'm deciding how much excess string to use to wind round the machine heads, basically I stretch it out so it's taut kind of and meet up with the first machine head that I'm gonna, you know, f for this string. And then I count to the next machine head and then the one after, and then you do that sequentially down the strings. So, so there it is like that, clip off the excess string thread it through. This is particularly just for strats, by the way. Um, and then use the string stretcher <laughs> so you can see how it works. Equally, we can use the Didario one, as you can see. So you get it and then you basically hook the string under and... Now I'm just gonna repeat this process for, you know, the whole guitar. Strung up, tuned up. I remember reading once Steve Vai interview or something saying that he changes his strings after every eight hours of play. Could be wrong, but I seem to remember reading that. And I thought, oh, bloody hell, that's, that's a lot. To be fair, if I was sat recording a tune and I restrung my guitar at the beginning of the session, at the end of the day, if I was really going for it, it the strings would be dead because of like hand sweat and stuff and all, all the rest of it when you're intensely going at it, you will notice that. So could be right in that 
you know, you, there's a lot of little workarounds when it comes to getting your strings to sound a bit newer. Like, obviously, that zing comes from fresh strings. But, for example, if you take a guitar that has older strings on it, for example, this guitar, quite, quite dead. Obviously, this is a really low string. This is a 68. So to get that zing, it will die off quite quick with a string like this. But if you loosen the string, I learned this from Pete, if you loosen the string and slap against the fretboard, it won't make it sound brand new, but it certainly gives it a bit of a zing back. I mean, it's mildly better. I don't know if John can edit the two together. Right, the next uh, guitar that I'm going to restring is my ML3 Beer Sig from Chapman. I use a specific gauge for these. I've managed to find a box of some pretty funny packs of strings, including some of the ones that I use from Didario. Back in the day when I used to want to tune to drop B, I used to use a normal scale guitar, my N4, and I couldn't understand why it was always so flappy. And I was like, I need to get thicker strings. I didn't even think about scale length. I didn't know about scale length. I just thought, I'll get thicker strings. And so I used to use these. These are the GHS Boomers, the Zach Wilde set, I think it was, 11 to 70. That would just about get me the right feel that I wanted, but honestly, they're way too thick to be putting on a Floyd Rose. I actually crushed so many Floyd Rose blocks trying to, trying to clamp these in. In any case, I actually use now a custom set from Didario. They were kind enough to make me a custom set, so um, these are all NYXL singles put into a, a pack just for me, which is really kind. These are 14 to 68, which is what I've used um, for my baritone guitars now for a few years with Tosca. Because honestly, in the Tosca stuff with the baritone, there was no lead. So I just needed to be able to play chords and riffs and it stay in tune and be nice and tight and intonate properly. So that was how I got around, was basically taking, I think it was half a seven string set to get the right gauges mixed in with, I think it was 12 to 60 set, and then I used some of the seven string sets to, to get the gauges how I wanted them in, in terms of tension. So there's a wound G string on this guitar. And so anyway, 14 to 68 is what I landed on. So it's 14, 18, a wound 28, wound 38, 49, and a 68. The only real nuisance is the wound G, but that's because no one really likes using a wound G string on an electric guitar, but such is life. So in any case, that's what we're restringing next. Something else worth pointing out as well is that all guitars, in my opinion, should have locking tuners. And most of my guitars, bar the fenders, have locking tuners, because it's just so much quicker. On this guitar, these are the hip shot ones the open lock, hip, uh, grip lock hip shot tuners, which are really good. And I use also the uh, Charla ones as well. Look at the state of this string. Can you see the thickness? It is such a thick string. So now I'm just gonna put this 68 on and we'll just have a quick listen to a fresh 68 against the dead one and the one that I kind of like slapped into new life. Right, I've restringed the 68, let's have a listen. Nice and new sounding. It's got a bit of a zing. Awesome, let's do the rest. So 
something else I thought I'd share with you, which is pretty cool, and I saw it. It was something that Nuno posted, I believe, on on Instagram, and he was talking about how like all the most important gigs in his life, when he's restringing his guitar, he saved the strings. And I was like, you know what? That's such a cool idea. Another reason to absolutely, you know, worship the dude when it comes to being a guitarist. So I did the same thing. So I've got my strings here that I used for the Stormzy uh, gigs at Reading and Leeds. Well, actually just the Reading because we swapped them out for the Leeds gig, but these are the Reading ones. And I just thought, yeah, you know, that's such a cool thing that I can, you know, say that these strings played that intense gig that I had. And, you know, it's just a cool idea. And I figured, you know, for all the, I wish I'd have done it for the download set we did with Tosca and the Nova Rock gig that I did with uh, Frog Leap, you know, just these massive gigs that, you know, have a milestone in my life and career and stuff. But going forward, that's what I'm doing. And so this is the first set that I've collected. Pretty cool. Um, and I think you guys should do the same thing. If, if, if you're into that kind of thing, you know, uh, if you've got any really cool gigs that you've played or moments with the guitar and, you know, save the strings. It's cool. Okay, so I know I said I was going to restring four guitars, but I'm not. I'm going to restring three. I was going to restring my Relic, but the strings aren't that old. And also, uh, it's just an E flat, but uh, so it's 10 to 52s. There isn't really much else to say other than, you know, the cool thing with this guitar is it has the uh, speedy loaders, these things, which if you've seen an old video I did when I was on tour with Dorje talk about it, but basically you thread the string through the end of these pole pieces here and they come out of the saddles and then you just string it up like a string through. Some people say it's not very accurate, but I've never had a problem in the whole time I've used them. They're called speedy loaders. I found them on eBay for 25 quid. I don't think anyone else makes them. And to be fair, I haven't looked since, but yeah, so I'm not gonna restring that guitar because I feel like it'd be a waste because they're not that old. But we're gonna restring the mayonnaise because I haven't put strings on this in a while. It's easy to string, it's a string through. And yeah, I figured it was probably worth doing. So I'm gonna put on this 11 to 56, which is, my sort of drop. Whoops. 11 to 56 is what I use pretty much for everything. Uh, D standard, drop C, for Tosca, for writing, all that kind of stuff. I used to use 11 to 60. That's for live, really. Like, I just like them to be a little bit thicker when I'm playing live because I always go a little bit harder. Basically, the strings gauges that I use most of the time are the 10 to 52 NYXL, the 1156 NYXL, and then my custom set 14 to 68 NYXL. Those are the kind of main strings that I use. But yeah, let's restring up this beast. Again, hip shot, grip lock. Um, so nice and easy. This guitar also features the Sharlahana's bridge, which is a string through. If you've ever seen one before, they're really interesting to look at. Um, and on the back, you've got the brass block. And basically it's like just a string through system. And these saddles, these, these little saddle things, they're made from the same stuff they make the nut from, like Graftech nut, I think. One thing I can honestly say about the Charlehanas bridge, which I didn't know until uh, getting it, is that it makes the guitar way brighter because of the material, which when you're doing split call positions, call split positions, and you're doing any kind of compressed stuff like I can do with this guitar, with the preamp circuit, it's really good, it's almost piezo-like. This is great for lead and the ambient stuff and for really articulate guitar passages. Okay, I've strung it up and played a chord and now for the creme de la creme of the experience for me. One lick, a fast rip. Do that on all the guitars. Obviously you didn't see that on the other ones, but this is what happens. I just can't, I've got to use it.
So I've said it before in other uh, videos, but this particular guitar with that preamp and the bridge, position four, use the preamp, so it's compression and EQ, and it's just. So one of the things I like most about restringing this guitar is getting a tone like that and then playing that for a bit because it sounds so good with fresh strings. Giving it a lick of fast fret, if that's your thing, and uh, just getting getting going with a fresh set of strings on your guitar. It is great. So let me know what you guys do in the comments section. Have you got any like little hacks or anything you do with your restringing or if you tried any of these gauges before or anything that you think works for, you know, D standard, drop C, drop A, all the rest of it. And if any of you use fast fret, and if you haven't, give it a go. I saw a comment recently uh, someone commented on my Instagram basically saying like if there was one b uh, product beer Can honestly say he's endorsed his entire life playing guitar it would be fast fret and that's absolutely true Using it from day one to now. I don't know the guys at fast fret. I'm not endorsed by them in any way It's just people have asked about it. So I'm letting you know it's it's one of my absolute Desert Island tools for good playing guitar. That is the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Hope it was useful to some of you guys and answered some of the questions I get asked a lot about strings. Like, subscribe and share. I've been Rabir and I will see you all very soon.